Hello everyone, peace of Christ to all. This video is very extreme important and I would like people to download it and post it everywhere, please. What you see in, the, in YouTube, thousands of videos made by Muslims and speeches speaking about the return of the Messiah. What do you feel as a Christian? Me as a Christian, honestly, I feel so happy. Because even the pagan Muslims who kiss a stone, bow for a stone, go around a stone, pray for direction of stone, they have one hope, is the coming of the Messiah. But there is a serious question we need to ask, why the Muslims are waiting for the return of Jesus, the Christ, not Muhammad, the dead. So we are going in this video to hear what the Muslim want to say and then we will say what we need to say. So please enjoy my video and learn from it and share it with your friends. Thank you. I have a question on behalf of non-Muslim and Muslims. Okay. Uh, it is said that Muhammad وسلم, was the last prophet and other prophets came as long as uh, with him to guide us and show us the right way. So, and the Quran was completed on the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the time of his period, on that time. So I ask, why is it necessary and where, is, where in Quran it is mentioned that Jesus will return, which is the major signs of Judgment Day? And why is it a new prophet or Jesus ca uh, came will come after Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam completed the Quran and completed his prophetism. He was the last prophet. Why is, it, why is Jesus coming again? Okay. As for the return of Jesus, it is not mentioned directly in the Quran. However, it is hinted at. It is hinted at in the Quran. However, Muslims do not consider the Qur'an to be the only source of information about our religion. This is very important to understand. There is not only the Qur'an, but as the Prophet sallallahu Okay, I will stop here and I, will, I want people to take a note. So the only, the Qur'an is not the only source of Islam. That's mean the Muslims, they accept that there is holy scriptures and unholy scriptures to be the source of Islam. And that alone is a contradiction for following a religion. One is based in something holy and something unholy. And that's showing us the hypocrisy of Muslims because they say to you they follow only what is supposedly holy. But suddenly we find that Muslims, they consider what is unholy is a source of Islam. To make it simple, if we ask the Muslims, is the hadith holy? They will say to you, from all the hadith, we have only about 40 of them holy. The rest, they are not. Then how you can make from the unholy a source for your religion? That simply because of Islam have a problem. Quran did not cover anything of the major issue for a belief. To make it simple, if you open the Quran and read from the beginning to the end, you will not find a teaching. It's just a stupid talk. Someone repeating stories like the Quran have a chapter speaking about the ant and Solomon and the value of the ants and the ant telling the, the ants to hide and then speaking about the flying carpet and then speaking about the bird who look for women for the King Solomon. Long story, but there's no teaching. It's just a fairy tale story fabulous of all nations, legions, and Muhammad, he put it in the Quran. So the Quran is an empty book. This is why Muslims, they were so in, in need of having additional source for the religion. Now, if we go and ask the Muslims, and I, I, I know actually most of you witness in our debate with Muslims, right away when a Muslim, we put him in the corner with something Muhammad, he said, he said, this hadith is weak, is weak. Which mean, you know, by the way, weak doesn't mean it is not uh, valid. No. Weak, it means we are not sure if it's true or not. <laughs> That's all. They cannot refuse it. They cannot, they cannot delete it from the book. Because if it is wrong, why you have it in the book? And they will take it. 
they cannot take it off because simply what this what they what they say weak they are saying to you we are not 100% sure that this is what really Muhammad is saying so then how you can trust source which is not to be trusted and make it as a source of your religion to follow and yet you say to the Christians your book is corrupt when you are following a source is full of corruption from your mouth actually the Muslims right away when you mention to them uh, uh, any hadith which is making Muhammad look stupid as an example Muhammad is speaking about uh, 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 say shaitan he fart when 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 you call him for a prayer Muhammad uh, he used to clean his hand with full of uh, poo, poo in the wall Muhammad he used to clean his hand uh, uh, full of sperm in the wall which means he was a very dirty savage man you know when you mention those things Muslim right away they say oh those are written by the Jews when the fact the one who collect them is Al Imam Al Bukhari one of the most trusted source of Islam for the Hadith so Muslims they play the game of weak when they want and they play the, the game of strong when they want however weak or strong it doesn't matter you have any trusted source but yet you consider it as a source for your religion that is a hypocrisy and that is a stupidity too because either you want to follow God or you want to follow the words of he said she said are you people go by who he said she she said we just heard this gentleman saying that there is nowhere in the Quran it says that Jesus will return did you hear it so where do you get this from oh we got this from the hadith the question is how come such an important matter do you know how extremely important this is story about one unique prophet supposedly Jesus is a prophet for them his name is Isa by the way some people they ask me what Isa mean uh, for us as, a, as an as an uh, you know like the Arab Christians they have no idea where this word is coming from but according to Islam they say that the word Isa mean the word and the spirit of God so Jesus or the word Isa mean the word and the spirit of God me myself I'm not against the meaning this is wonderful meaning actually beautiful this is telling me who is who is the Messiah this is powerful actually definition but I refuse the name because it's not true however how come such an important story of God who sent 124,000 prophets all of them they pass away as we see in the Quran in chapter 3 verse 144 it says that Muhammad is not Muhammad is just a prophet and all the messengers before him pass away some translation they say many messengers try, you know pass away before him that's false in Arabic it says وَمَا مُحَمَّدٌ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ خَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِهِ الرُّسُلُ Muhammad is nothing but a messenger that all messengers قَدْ خَلَتْ which means it's empty totally empty messengers before him which means no exception so all messengers before him pass away this is a contradiction for what you are telling me because now they will tell us that the Quran says that Jesus he was taken to heaven and he will come back but where do you get this from is it in the Quran no it's not in the Quran where it is it is in the hadith is that hadith authentic they will say yeah it is but this is mean you take the authentic word of a human being not the authentic word of God because we need to ask ourselves another question let us say for the sake of argument Muhammad he said that Jesus will come back Jesus will come back then we need to know how Muhammad know about it and why it is not in the Quran it's not important like Allah have time to talk about the ant or what about a story like this chapter 18 verse 22 there is they are saying there's three and and the, 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 the fourth of them is their dog and some they say they are fifth and the, and, the, and the sixth of them is their dog and some of them they say they are seven and the eight of them is their dog say my God knows better 
It did not even tell us who, who, how many they are. Stupid story, have no mean of it. We don't know who are those guys. We have no idea what they are. And now the topic is, are they three and four, or three and their dog, or four and their dog, or five and their dog, or six and their dog, and seven and their dog, and eight, or the, 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 come on. Tell us how many and that's it. But yet, the whole verse doesn't say how many they are. So Allah have all the time to tell us a stupid story about how many goats with them, how many dogs with them, how many they are, but they didn't tell us even how many, because he himself, he's not sure, he's just making things up. He's afraid to say there are three and their dog, and later they discover people, the story it's not. He's afraid to say there are four and their and dog, because later maybe somebody will say, no, it's not, you are wrong. So is it a three and four and, their, and, and the fourth and their dog, or it is five and the six of them is their dog? Is it seven and the, and, and the eight of them is their dog? And now where is the answer? Nothing. So the Quran author, he have time to tell us about stupid stories, fairy tale stories, but he don't have a time to tell us in one verse, as this guy, he said, not me. We heard him in the video that the Quran never mentioned that Jesus would come back. According to Muslims, there is only one verse almost speaking about that the Messiah or something about the Messiah. But actually, if you speak Arabic, you will see that this verse has nothing to do with, uh, uh, with the story they are talking about. If you read the translation, this is chapter 4, verse 159, you will see it says, And there is not one of the followers of the book, but most certainly believes in, his, in this before his death. And on the day of the resurrection, he, Isa, by the way, Isa does not exist there, shall be witness against them. If you remember in chapter 4, verse 157, the Quran speak about uh, that they think that they killed Jesus, but the fact, Allah, he made someone look like him. All right? So this verse statement is, that Jesus is, was not the one who was killed, but certainly there is someone who looked exactly like Jesus, he was killed. And this is a proof that the Christians, they are not making up story in their book when they say we saw Jesus the cross. Because if you are saying to me someone looked exactly like Jesus was crucified, then the Christians are, are, are stating or making a statement of what they witness, which is a true witnessing that they saw Jesus in the cross. Oh, what you are saying to me that your God Allah is a cheater and he replaced Jesus with someone else and then we made us believe it is Jesus. So the fact, according to the story, the one who made the Christians the Christians by deceiving them is Allah because he is the one who made us believe that Jesus was on the cross and he was crucified, but the fact he was not. So the story itself is very stupid. Then if we go to the verse after, you will see that the Quran say the following. Uh, but Allah raised him up to him all right now according to this allah he take, took him up to heaven <clears throat> okay no problem so jesus now in heaven they did not crucify him they crucify someone look like him because allah makes someone look like him and allah take him to heaven okay and then he says in, in verse uh, four, uh, uh, 159 and there is not one of the follower of the book but mostly certainly believes in his in this before his death. Believe in this what? You see, the, the Muslim when they translate, they are very, uh, they are, I think they are using Google translation. It doesn't say believe in this, it's believe in him. Believe in him. Let us read the other translation. And decidedly there is not one of the population of the book, population of the book, okay or family of the book, family of the book, the Jews and the Christians, but will indeed definitely believe in him. This is correct now, him. Now, if Jesus is just a man, and Jesus is just a prophet, what do you mean believe in him? This is wrong. They should not believe in him, they should believe in God. If Jesus is just a prophet, Same time, there is not even one of the people of the book, but before the judgment day he will believe in him. What does this have to do with the coming of Jesus? Nothing. 
you are saying to me that all those who they are Jews and the Christians with no exception they will believe in him well the Christians already believe in him so maybe this will go for the Jews only but still this has nothing to do with the coming back of Jesus so the whole Quran has nothing to do never said anywhere that Jesus will come back Oh, what you are saying to me that in the judgment day he will be a witness against them well he is alive and he will be witnessing no problem because you told me already that he took him up to heaven but where in the Quran we can find that Jesus is coming back it's not exist so Allah have a time to speak about the dog and the three guys and the four guys and the five guys and the six guys and the seven guys but he don't have time to tell us one sentence clearly saying that Jesus is coming back and the funny if you see a Muslim videos you will see there's tons of videos speaking about God don't beat around the bushes God don't make confusion God he speak directly God he say things right away God don't go around the bushes if God want to say to you worship Jesus he will say to you worship Jesus how come when it's come to your book we cannot find one statement saying that Jesus is going to come back and speaking about the return of Jesus, establishing a kingdom of Islam, ruling the whole world by Jesus, he will be the king and the ruler. And this, the strange, the hadith says he will be absolute just ruler, which means he must be God, because nobody can rule with just, absolute just. Hakaman muqsitan, that's what Muhammad said, which means absolute justice by Jesus. How he can do that unless he is God, because God is the one who knows the unseen. So you cannot lie to him, you cannot bring, uh, you can't bring for him a, a false witnesses, you cannot lie to God, he knows exactly what you did and he will give you what you deserve. So that is what Jesus will do in the judgment day. So in this video, what we are asking the Muslims is, you have no source from the Quran saying Jesus will come back, but yet you believe in it blindly. same time you ask the Christians show me one verse where Jesus said I am God worship me in the Bible and when we provide you many of them still you don't take it anyway so you rejected the word is considered the word of God but you accepted the word which is considered hadith which is a speech of people including your prophet who's your prophet anyway if you're a prophet, he learned this from the angel, it's mean he should be receiving Quran. Like what? The angel, he used to have a conversation with Muhammad over the phone. Normal talk and other conversation is Quran. If the angel, he learned about the coming of Jesus, it's mean God, he spoke to the angel, he told him Jesus will come back. And that will be the word of God. This is not a speech. How the angel learned about the coming of Jesus? Muslim will say to you, God told him, wonderful, that should be Quran. Because what God told Jibreel is what Quran is. But to say to me that there is some of what God said to Jibreel, it's just a speech, and some what God he says to Jibreel, it is Quran, that is the most funny, stupid argument ever you can come with. Either the word of God is holy, or it is not. Either you say all of them they are equal, not one is a speech for the street, and one is considered to be Holy Quran. Same time, why not even one person before the judgment day, but he believe in the Messiah? That is a contradiction. Because you told us that the Christians are kuffar, the Christians will go to hell, the Christians are bad, the Christian, and then suddenly we will find that you know what, all of us, all of us will be saved. Because all of us will believe. Now for sure he might say to you, oh the Quran, yes, saying that all of you will believe, but still you will not be saved because it's going to be too late. Prove it. Where in the Quran it says that? Here we go, the verse in front of us. Oh, you want to tell me that Allah, he forgot to add a, a, a sentence saying, yes, he will, he will believe, but you will not. So that this is me, the Quran is a very funny, dummy book. And this is why we see the Quran uh, is, is one of the most uh, famous book need interpretation. 
And the interpretation need interpretation of interpretation of interpretation of interpretation. And by the way, not only the Quran need interpretation, interpretation. Like there's thousands of books, interpretation of the Al-Bukhari. The interpretation of Al-Bukhari, the interpretation of the interpretation of Fath al-Bari, the interpretation of interpretation of the interpretation, 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 and at the end of the day, Muslims are more confused with more interpretation. This is why we see when a Muslim asks a question, we see that the Muslim guy, he is going around in a circle. He has no idea what to say. But I want to go back to the topic. My video is getting longer. Why the Messiah is the only one who will come back? Why not Muhammad? Other than what is contained in the Quran, and that knowledge has been preserved in those sayings of the Prophet which have been rigorously authenticated. <laughs> this is a big subject, we don't have time to go into it. We don't have time for so it. Most of the information that we have about the return of Jesus is based upon the information in the rigorously authenticated hadith, which the details of which, inshallah, Dr. Do, do they know he's coming? I'm going to spoil yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Dr. Abu Amina, I thought you didn't know yet, you know. So, Dr. Abu Amina Bilal Phillips will be covering on Monday on his talk, The Signs of the Last Day of Dajjal. So, he will talk about definitely, he will talk about Isa in that talk. However, why? First of all, I want to mention Isa alayhi salam is not coming as a prophet. Jesus is not coming again as a prophet. He is coming as a follower of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why when he comes and he descends with his hands on the... the just wait, just wait. Where, where you get this from? And look how stupid it is. Why a prophet want to follow a prophet? Do you see the madness of those people? Why a prophet he want to follow a prophet? That is the most stupid. You see, those people, they have madness. They, are, they, they worship Muhammad. Is Muhammad God to follow him? Why someone is in the right path, that is Jesus, he want to follow a prophet like him. Like why Moses want to follow Jesus if Jesus is just a prophet? That's a stupid statement to say, unless Jesus is higher, unless Jesus is God. But you say to me that both of them, they are prophet, and then one prophet will follow other prophet. Why? So Jesus will not come back as a prophet. He will come to follow Muhammad, but Muhammad is dead. <laughs> if Muhammad is the one to follow, what about bringing the one everybody should follow? Not Jesus in the judgment day. Why Muhammad, he himself, as long as everybody should follow him, we bring him back and he will be the one who will return. You are bringing to me Jesus and you are saying to me Jesus is the one who will return to save the whole universe but he is going to follow Muhammad, the one is dead? That do you Muslims follow dead one or you, feel you, you, you follow the living one? That statement alone is enough to prove to us that Muslims worship Muhammad. Because if you follow Allah, you will not say such a statement. If Allah is the living God, you follow him. You don't follow Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. And actually, the hadith proved that Muslims, they worship Muhammad. If you read this hadith, let me show it to you in the screen in front of you, so you can see the reference. You will see Omar saying, you know, such a statement that whoever of you worship Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. And whoever worship Allah, Allah is alive. You will see here, whoever worship Muhammad, then Muhammad is dead but whoever worship Allah then Allah is alive now the question is why he is saying such a statement if there is no one worship Muhammad anyway why you need to say whoever worship Muhammad then we know what Muhammad is dead that means the Muslims they worship Muhammad and Allah 
Now we have one of them, he passed away. And now we have another one supposed he is alive. And the Abdul saying to me that Jesus, when he come back and he is the living one, right now supposed he with Allah, he is going to follow Muhammad. Why? Because those Muslims, Abduls, they worship Muhammad. And they don't even consider what Umar he said. Umar saying to them, you know what? Muhammad is not really what you thought. This is why when Muhammad he passed away, they did not bury him for three days. They thought he will come back, he will resurrect it the same as Jesus. To the point his flesh was demolished, was bad, was disgusting. The smell is so disgusting. They could not even wash him and bury him in different place. And then they come with a story saying that the prophet said, prophets should not be washed and should be buried where they die. But the fact is not the reason. Muhammad, he was buried in his bed, which is the bed of Aisha. The same location, because they could not move him from his place. They cannot carry him. His skin became a green, became etc. because simply he stink. Three days in the Saudi Arabia, desert heat without a refrigerator. You can imagine how bad it is. I'm not going to ask why they waited three days. When Muslims should bury their dead man in this before the same day before the sun set. The same day. In the case of Muhammad, they waited three days. So what I want to say to Muslims at the end of this video, even though there's a lot of things I want to say, if you go to your Quran, you will see very clear proofs that there's all your book is nothing but a contradiction. And just to close this video with one of the contradiction, I will show you the following. He would not wipe, meaning wipe with his hand over someone who had some type of illness, except that person would be cured. So that's why he became known as in Masih, Masih, wipe. So he would wipe someone who is ill and that person would become okay. Thank you. The Messiah, he just put his hand over you and you will recover. And Muhammad is the greatest who could not do anything. But the Messiah is no one. Messiah is going to come back to follow Muhammad. But the Messiah, he have a magical hand. He put his hand over you. He don't even touch you. You are recovered. What do you have? Cancer? What do you have? What is your problem? You are dead? The Messiah, he put his hand over you. And like this, you are alive again. Why? What's wrong with you? Muslims, what's wrong with you? For God's sake, what's wrong with you? This is the Messiah you are talking about, and you are telling me Muhammad is the prophet you follow? When Muhammad was busy with Aisha, the Messiah was, was, was doing healing for people, you know, thousands of people, they are coming to him. When Muhammad was busy with the children and sex with 13 wives and hundreds of companions of girls for sex slaves, what the Messiah was doing? And you are telling me you are a follower of Muhammad? What else you want to tell me, Mr. Uh, Sheikh Kamal? When we say Al-Masih, we are referring to Isa ibn Maryam, Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary. But, so the difference between this Masih and the other, the other one is referred to as Al-Masih al-Dajjal. When you say al-Dajjal, you are referring to the Antichrist, as we say in English, and the Dajjal... Just wait, just wait. Who is the Antichrist? Is Satan. Now why Satan he called himself Antichrist, not anti-Muhammad? Like if Muhammad is the greatest, why Satan he decide to be the Antichrist, but he wanna he don't want to be the anti muhammad like what, what Muhammad is too small to the Satan? Muhammad doesn't count? You see, when there is when there is two kings are fighting, and let us say I am a soldier in the army of one of the kings. The kings, they talk, they challenge each other. They don't mention my name. Why? Because I'm so tiny, I'm so small, I'm just a soldier. The names of the kings will be mentioned. So now we have two kings. We have the king of this earth, that is Satan. And we have the king of the world, that is the Messiah. So the king of this earth, he decide to be the anti-king of the world, the universe. So he called himself the Antichrist. One more question. 
why Satan is Antichrist but not anti Muhammad? If you just said we heard him before the other guy saying that Jesus will come to follow Muhammad, that is very funny and a lot of contradiction and a lot of stupidity in this story. Continue. It means it's a liar, right? So Al-Masih al-Dajjal is known. If you say just Al-Masih, it means automatically you're speaking about Isa ibn Maryam. Now, then comes the issue, which is we're, we're talking about the return of Isa alayhi salam. So in order for him to return, he must have gone somewhere, correct? And dispute then arises as to whether he was, he, when he was taken, was he taken alive or was he taken dead? Yeah, and he's, he's dead and then he'll be resurrected in, upon his return. Or he was taken alive and he'll just be returned. So we'll look at some of the verses in the Quran that mention the incident of Isa alayhi salam ascending and being taken up by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَقَوْلِهِمْ إِنَّا قَتَلْنَا الْمَسِيحَ عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَمَا قَتَلُهُ Allah says, so they're saying, we have killed the Al-Masih, the Messiah, Isa ibn Maryam, Rasulullah, the Messenger of Allah. And Allah says, وَمَا قَتَلُهُ And they did not kill him. وَمَا صَلَبُهُ And they did not crucify him. وَلَكِنْ شُبِّهَ لَهُمْ But someone in his likeness was given to them. And then in the later part of the verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَلْ رَفَعُهُ اللَّهُ إِلَيْهِ uh, rather, Allah lifted him up to him. So Allah Rafa'uhu lifted him up to him. وكان الله عزيزا حكيما. In Surah Al Imran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also mentions this, and Allah Azza wa Jalla says, إذ قال الله يا عيسى إني متوفيك إني متوفيك ورافعك إلي ومطهرك من الذين كفروا. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, يا عيسى I am mutawafiq. Yeah, mutawafiq. We're going to come back to this verse. Because what does mutawafiq means? Because some people looked at it and it looks like, if you look at it in standard Arabic, it looks like I'm taking your soul. Mutawafiq. Warafi'uka ilay. And raise, I will raise you to me. And wa mutahiruka min alladheena kafru. So focus with me here. This is very important because this is another contradiction in the Quran. The Quran writer is really a foolish man. He just said, Oh Jesus, I'm going to cause you to die and then I will resurrect you to me. But the Muslim, they say, Jesus was not crucified. He was just taken to heaven right away. Now, this guy is reading for us a verse and he says, if you, if you, if you take it in Arabic way, in the Arabic language, as it says in the Quran, you, you, will, you will see it as, you will die first and then I will take you. Listen carefully. Purify you, or and it really, it's like save you from those who disbelieved. So, what does mutawafiq mean? So, Qatada, يعني one of the one of the scholars, he said, هذا من المقدم والمؤخر. يعني meaning that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala put the the one that comes after before. <laughs> the the meaning of the verse would be إني رافعك إلي ومتوافق. يعني I am going to to, to so now he is changing the words of the Quran saying it should be this way it should be I'm going to take you up and then I will cause you to die to explain how Jesus will come back and suppose that he will die later but the Quran doesn't say that you see how hypocrite they are the Quran doesn't say that he is changing the Quran statement to make it fit with the story because this is a contradiction basically uh, I will lift you up to me, uh, and then later on, yeah? as you return, you will die. Uh oh. So I'm going to first lift you, and then as you come back, you will be killed. Where it says that? Where it says when you come back, you will you will die? Where? Where? <laughs> verse says, die, then raise. See, the verse says, die, then raise. The verse. Did you hear him? The verse says, die, then raised. The Muslim, they say, no. But the verse say, die, and then raised. So the Muslim don't go even by what Allah said. They have to come with their interpretation, says, well, if this is true, this is a contradiction. So we have to fix it. So they make it raised and then die. When the verse and the Quran saying totally the opposite. 
And just to show you the hypocrisy of the Muslims, I have all the translations made by Muslims in the front of me, as you see on the screen. Not even one of them was honest, as we heard in the video. The guy in the video, he says, I will cause you to die and then raise you. In the translation, none of them even mentioned the word, I will cause you to die. None of them translate the word metawafika. They are saying just, I will terminate your uh, existence in the earth. Uh, I will take you and raise you. What is the word? What is the word? I will, I, will, I will cause you to die. It's gone. I will take thee and raise thee to myself. What is the word? Mutawafiq. I'm going to cause you to die. I'm going to terminate the period of your stay in the earth. What does that mean? What terminate, man? <laughs> Terminator? This is Terminator 3? The guy in the video, we just heard him saying the truth. The verse saying that I will cause you to die and then raise you. But in the translation, it's gone. There is no term, there is no, like, I will cause you to die. There is nothing. Because it's this translation is meant, meant to lie to you. This is why I say always, Muslims debate those who do not speak Arabic for very simple reason. Like let us say they are debating a brother Sam Shamoon or anyone uh, without mission. I'm not putting Sam Shamoon down by the way, but I'm saying how he will know. How he will know that this is a lie unless somebody tell him that you know what in Arabic it says mutawafiq. And this is the benefit of listening to those who speak Arabic very well. Not only you know like study Quran and Islam and have degrees in it, but Arabic is the most important factor in exposing Islam because as you see I have now one translation two three four five six translation not even one of them is giving the truth not even one the word I will cause you to die is gone we see it in the video we don't see it here ask yourself why so Qatada يعني one of the one of the scholars he said هذا من المقدم والمؤخر يعني meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the the one that comes after before meaning the the meaning of the verse would be inni rafi'uka ilayya wa mutawafiq يعني I am going to 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 يعني basically I will lift you up to me and then later on as you return you will die so I'm going to First, lift you, and then as you come. Remember, this is not the, this is not, not not what the verse is saying. This is the interpretation. They're trying to find a solution. This is not what the verse is saying. Now he will say what the verse is saying. Listen carefully. Back, you will be killed. But the verse says, "Die, then raise." The verse says, "Die and then raise." The verse says, "Die and raise." So how come in the translation we don't see it? How come in six translation made by Muslims we cannot find the word "die and raise"? because Islam is based on deception. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Please download it, post whatever you want. It's going to be private listed and I will post it in investigateislam.com so you can tell your friends if you ever miss it, you want to find it, you can find it always there in investigateislam.com. God bless you and don't forget if you want to learn more about Islam to read my books. Remember, by purchasing our books, you are sponsoring what we do if you care for what we do. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. I mean to that. See you.